What's up, man? Up, Jeff, Mr. Henry. <laughs> How are you, man? I'm good. Still waiting on my, my real swag. We're going to order new swag soon and get it out to everyone. Okay. Included. All right, cool. So, Domar Cross here with Real Advisors, and I have my guy, Jeff, on the call. So, what I wanted to do is uh, start a series of case studies that we're going to call The Real Deal. And the purpose of this is to show that real estate investors around the country are still crushing it right now, even in these economic times that we're in. Uh, we're entering a new economy right now. There's a lot of uncertainty in the marketplace. And in spite of what's going on out there, within our community, we have people like Jeff and others that are absolutely crushing it, absolutely dominate, dominating their, their business right now, even in these times. So, Jeff, real quick, what is the date today? What is today's date right now? 4-24-2020. <laughs> right? It's <laughs> April 24, 2020. And I literally asked Jeff just yesterday, hey, do you mind hopping on a call real quick? Because uh, I know you're dominating right now, along with uh, many of uh, the other people in our community. Uh, would you mind sharing uh, and being completely transparent and open with what are you doing right now in your business to be able to dominate and thrive during these times when others are running scared, while others are concerned about their business? They're not sure if this is still a viable business or not. What are you doing right now to still stay um, you know, on top of your business and, and make money right now? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So what we're doing right now in our business, we're actually, we hired more. So I actually hired a new employee, new disposition um, agent. Um, I also am hiring new cold callers. Um, I just recently gave my cold caller manager a raise to manage my call, my bigger team. So in the spite of the situation we're going through right now, I'm actually increasing my overhead by a little bit so my team can actually perform better now we also decrease our market in you know so we're more target market um doing target marketing versus you know kind of spread out gunshot right so these little changes has helped us and then what we also did our disposition guy we trained him to go strictly start cold calling our, our all our cash buyers and build in a new relationship with them and find out what exactly do they want currently in this market, going through the COVID-19, what do you have, what, what are you looking for so we can give you that inventory? And so now we're taking that and then we're going, going directly in target market in it and now we're putting those two together. So that has helped us in, in this type of situation. I, I think that's a very important point because you just brought up another concern that a lot of people have right now. Lenders are backing out of, of financing deals. There's some that, are, that have exited the industry or paused lending temporarily. Mm -hmm. While that has happened, there's still tons of other lenders that are still lending even Correct. right. Uh, the other concern is buyers, ba buyers backing out of deals. Um, and while that's happening, there's still tons of buyers that are still buying right now. I, I think the big institutional buyers that got, had Wall Street money, they have stopped buying mm -hmm. because you know, Wall Street, you know, they, they're very cautious a lot of times when there's disruption in the marketplace, but there's still tons of other buyers out there with lots of capital, a lot of, a lot of money still buying deals in spite yep. of what's going on. So it sounds like you did some research, did some data, you know, reached out to all of the cash buyers that are still actively buying right now today through your research and mm -hmm. outreach phone calls and so forth. You've built new relationships with uh, new buyers that you maybe found or, or lean in on existing buyers that are in your database right. right now, your buyers list, they're still buying and re-engaging them, find out what their updated criteria is because everyone, all buyers are changing their criteria right now to adjust. Absolutely. You know, being a, you know, they may, they may be buying a little bit more conservatively, which means you as a wholesaler need to adjust with your numbers on the buy side as well. Right, adjust we gotta buy deeper. Down. Yeah, if house values are going down, buyers are getting more conservative, you as a wholesaler also get more conservative. You can, it's, it's like day trading. You just adapt. Exactly. And it's crazy because if you're not adapting, you're, you're pretty much killing your business, you know? And, and that's why we're part of like some great groups, um, uh, real estate groups, just so we can get that knowledge. And, you know, I don't mind spending $80,000 a year to be a part of like a bunch of education groups, because for me, 
that just elevates us. And these, and specifically for these type of times right now, we can fall back in those communities and say, what's going on? How can we overcome this market? You know, here's what we need to do and adjust our business. Because if you want to survive and thrive, this is what you need to implement, right? And so that's what we're doing in our, in our market right now. I think that's a great point because I remember when the last recession came and I lost everything, I made the biggest mistake, the single biggest mistake that I could have ever made was I became embarrassed. I was embarrassed about what happened because I was, I was on top of my game, right? Crushing in mm -hmm. business. But when I lost everything, I was embarrassed. So I, be, I, 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 I went into my hole. I, I didn't right. talk to anyone. I wasn't around other like-minded people. And so I wasn't able to learn what they were doing to shift and pivot their businesses to still survive during those times and capitalize and then thrive. So I lost two, almost two and a half years of time because I was in my depressed state of mind. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when I finally snapped out of that, it was all that, all it took was a simple conversation with three different people on the same day, actually. And it was just like a snap of the finger, a flip of the switch to shift my mindset on the limiting beliefs that I enroll myself into that I couldn't do this. I couldn't make money in real estate right now in that economy, uh, which is similar to the one we're about to enter. Um, that I, I did that to myself. But once I made that switch in my mindset, boom, within a week, I had a million dollars in funding. Uh, three months later, I was one of the top buyers in my target market. And all it took was the right knowledge and surrounding myself with the right people that were able to pour into me and share with me, hey, just turn this, tweak this, turn this up, turn yep. that stop doing that this is where the the sellers are now don't like it, that was all it took and so um i love the mind, mindset shift too you know yeah. big time yeah so i love that you shared that because you're absolutely right staying connected to groups like uh the, the group that we have and other communities out there is very important right now especially right now because there's a lot of external forces a lot of negativity the news is saying this uh mm -hmm. while there are people like you crushing it right now in spite of people saying uh, what they're saying about the economy. So um, I wanted you to share also some proof uh, because yes. talking about it, saying it is one thing, but as you know, we live by real, real right? Absolutely. We're super transparent and in everything we do, um, I know sometimes it can come off as, as sounding too good to be true. So what's very important to us all the time is to pull the curtain back on our businesses and, and share you know, what's actually happening. So before we started this call, you were sharing with me that you closed some deals recently. And so I wanted to give you an opportunity to share your screen real quick and show the people, Jeff, <laughs> show the proof that deals are still happening right now. And maybe even talk about what other deals you have in the pipeline coming up. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I'll tell you a little story behind some of these deals. So um, makes a little sense. And so, yeah, I love the story as well. So um, with the story, like, talk about how you acquired the deal. You know, what marketing campaign you used to do it. Did you have to change your offer um, if you were already on the contract? Yeah, you I'm, gonna, I'm exact, exactly. So this is a property that uh, we just recently closed on. Look at the date right here, 422, two days ago. Um, 6126 um, Hampton Drive. We had it on the contract. Um, for 180, we originally were selling it to our buyer for 190, and um, uh, so we we're gonna make 10k on this deal. It's quick little flip. Um, our buyer was trying to back out of this because of the COVID 19. He literally two days prior to closing, he was like, "Hey, I'm not gonna be able to be able to fund this deal." So what I did. I was pretty much like, hey, we need to get this deal done. The lady already moved out of her house. So how can we make this happen? He said, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to spend this much money right now. You know, and, and I'm kind of scared to spend it and not knowing what's going to happen 90 days down the road. I said, all right, well, hold on. Let's, let's, let's take it back. How about we do this? Okay. I'll put some skin in the game so we can get this to work. So instead, we took $5,000. Okay. We took $5,000 into this. And this is one of our whole key uh, flips that we were doing for one of our international investors, okay? So instead of us spending $50,000 in rehab, we were only, we, we dropped it down to say, hey, look, how about we do this? We just take this property, we'll go in there, clean it up, paint, and throw it on the MLS, okay? But 
instead of me making 10 grand, I'll go ahead and make five grand. We'll make the assignment fee 8,500. We'll take 3,500 from that. And we'll put that towards me fixing it up, buying a dumpster, cleaning it out, painting, and then we'll throw that back on the market and I'll get paid on the back end. And plus, if I can sell it over 222, we'll, we'll split the profits. So that way, now I turned a 10K deal that I was supposed to make, I could potentially now make 15K because I'm taking that stab in the beginning, but I'm gonna push my work to make more money on the back end. So being creative like that made me end up closing this deal. And you can see right here, we got assignment fee to sell quick now and or assigns $8,500, you know? So $3,500 is going towards me flipping, which I already started. We got a dumpster uh, yesterday. We're gonna actually clean everything out today. So that's already in the works, okay? And then we're gonna get paid on the back end even more money than we were originally gonna make. So that's, that's one deal that we just closed on 422, on April 22nd. Two days ago, two days, two days ago, you know, from this interview. Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I love that, you know, again, thinking outside the box uh, to get deals done still is what helped this happen. And I love, you know, thank you for sharing that story. So on this deal on the front end, it looks like you're netting 5,000. Mm -hmm. You're investing 3,500 of the 8,500 you got, but Correct. then you're positioning yourself in a way creative, you know, creatively on the back end with the buyer to be able to position yourself to make even more money on the back end as well than you initially intended to. Right. You yeah. Cause he just wanted us to put some skin in the game and, and show that, yeah, this house will sell. And I'm like, yeah, it's going to sell. I'm, I'm sure the comps are proving that it's going to sell. So you know what? I'll go ahead and put some skin in the game and we'll get this deal done. And, and so what's cool he was, about this, he was happy about that. Yeah. What's cool about this too, is you're not actually physically coming out of your own pocket with money. You're using the profits, uh, from the deal, right? The front end profits and reinvest mm -hmm. that into the property. So I, I, I want to bring that up and make that clear. So someone that's a newbie just getting started in this business, probably low on cash, maybe. Uh, I wanted to point that out that you're not actually taking money from your pocket right now. You're taking money from the actual deal that you made on the front end, reinvesting a portion of it into the deal to position yourself to make even more money on the back end. So no money All actually right. out your pocket technically. That is absolutely right. And that's the beauty of like our, our entire Hokey model that we do is that we use their funds to make all our profits. We don't never dip out of our, our own pockets. So this is a similar situation. So, that's yeah. amazing. Amazing. Yep. <laughs> and I see you have another deal here. Um, oh, yeah. So this one, we actually just, so you called me at, I don't know, like 1030 and we just got funded about like 1020. What time is it right um, so, now? It's, it's right uh, now. 1049. Yeah, there you go. So we just got funded on this deal. And I can show you the, the HUD here. So I'll literally show you the check right here that I just got wired into my account. 424, 20, 55,000. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. So this, this uh, you can see emails popping up funding. Um, so this was actually 94,000 gross assignment fee. Okay. And now we netted right currently. This was another one that we got creative with just so we can get this deal done. Um, and this is very important right now. You got to get creative trying to get your deals done because it all, I rather some money than zero money in my pocket. So we have to get creative on this, right? So we're, we're netting 55,000 right now. But as you can see here, I paid some people to get this deal done. And so in this HUD, we paid a company 14,000. We paid an agent 5,000. We made 55,000. And then we held back $20,000 in escrow because there's tenants involved. The buyer wanted to get the deal done, but they didn't want to get the, have to deal with the tenants. During this situation, because they're, you know, we're in this COVID-19, we can't evict, we can't do anything. We're going through all the struggle, right? I said, look, let's close this deal. I will put, I will literally hold back $20,000 out of my proceeds. We were supposed to make 75,000, as you can see, 55 plus is 20. And I'll hold back my funds. 
So I'm holding back $20,000 out of my proceeds. Again, am, am I mad that if I lose it? Yes, I will be mad because I want to make 75000 But am I okay making 55000 and getting the deal done currently in this situation? Absolutely. You know, so we're holding back 20K just to get this deal done. And, and we're holding it back for an, a period of 45 days. So I have 45 days to try to get these tenants out. So I'm going to use 5,000 from this fund right here. And I already told title out of this 20,000, I'm going to give you checks for tenants. So I'm going to pay them cash for keys to get out their property so we can, we can get them out, you know, and that's, that's what I have to do to make this, to get this deal done. Or they wanted to wait until July to close this deal until we get the situated. So I wanted to get the deal done today. So this is the, what we had to make arrangements for. And for those watching this, just to um, explain cash for the cash for keys concept, you know, it's, you know, especially for someone that's just getting into real estate, may not yeah. understand that concept. Yeah. So what we do is um, there's tenants involved and tenants, typically we give them cash to leave the property. You know, we typically pay anywhere from like a thousand dollars, you know, it could, it could be a little bit more, you know, but we typically try to give them like a thousand dollars to leave. Um, so in this case, there's three families. Um, so we're going to pay them uh, like $2,500 per family um, because they have kids and they have an entire family. And we're going to try to get them in a new, new location. So we're trying to pay them to leave instead of going through a whole eviction process and going through this, um, this crazy mess that we we're, we're in right now. So um, for us, it's a benefit to give them cash for their keys to, to vacate the property and that way we can we can move forward um, and this typical property is actually a land deal so we provided the buyer with um, the survey topography reports all everything they needed to actually build 27 units on townhomes on this land and the problem is is there's three mobile homes lit on that land and we need to get those mobile homes out so this was a solution that I came up with, holding back $20,000. And if I don't get them out before those 45 days, we forfeit that $20,000 to the buyer and they can use that for evictions and, and, and whatever. Man, I love the out of the box thinking that you're doing right now. Um, so in a perfect world, if all goes according to plan, it looks like you're just risking 5,000. And mm -hmm. so you have the potential to get the other $15,000 that's out of the $20,000 that's an escrow at the title company. So you can make your total of $70,000 on this deal. Correct. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And I'm okay paying people to get deals done. I was, you see here, I'm paid $14,000 to an, an agent and I'm paying another five to another agent. So we get, we, we're all working together to get this deal done. So can you lean in on that a little bit more? Why did you pay them to help get this deal done? What was, what was the reasoning behind that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the agent right here that I'm paying 5,000, he, he came to me and said, Hey Jeff, you know, I, I got a buyer that buys land. You know, we push this out to numerous buyers. I say, you know what, if you got a buyer that buys land, send it to me. I'm okay to pay you a referral fee on, on bridging this relationship. And so he was like, cool, you know, let, let's, let's get the deal done. The other agent was their agent for the, um, the company. So she was like, well, I need to, you know, get my fee to make this all happen. I said, all right, let's just, let's work out a number that <laughs> makes sense. And um, so we came to an agreement of 14 and that's how we got involved. These people are out of the country. So they don't even live here in, in, in the Tampa Bay area. So Normally, out-of-state, out-of-country investors have an agent tied to them, especially if they're a large fund. And in this case, they were. So that agent wanted their, her piece of the pie, so we end up paying her her fee. So that's how we got the deal done. Nice, man. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you for sharing this. And do you have any of the deals in the pipeline right now that are closing this week or next week? Well, it's, it's Friday today, so... Mm -hmm. I next week, the rest of this month, there's a couple of days left in this month. Do you have any other deals closing this month or the beginning of next month right now, in spite of what's going on right now? In spite of what's going on right now, I mean, we have, 
we literally have duh, 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 let's see we have we just recently got all these contracts and all these deals just got locked up so we're locking up deals um i didn't even know we just locked up one in washington that's new um we got tampa like all these deals that we just locked up and so my team right now is dispositioning them i could tell you like we got four that's on top here that already uh, pre-sold so amazing yeah amazing. jeff thank you so much man for being so transparent um and sharing so much um again that's what real is all about and um people like you are really an inspiration to many um you, you can relate to a lot of people as well right you just like mm -hmm. most, um you know started just like most probably watching a webinar or, or learning about real estate from um a training or something that you went to and and got into this business and most people look at real estate as an opportunity they realize what's possible by watching people like you and and others they watch tv shows and so forth but uh while they realize what's uh, what's possible a lot of times most of them cannot actualize it and in mm -hmm. times like this right now it makes even more people scared even people in the business that aren't staying connected to people like you and like-minded people they get scared and leave and they think ah, you know things are a little bit uncertain right now I'm, I, I think i'm going to exit or put things on hold while those that have the right knowledge the right information um, are able to dominate and thrive you know it's times like this where opportunities are created and millionaires and billionaires are made um, and you're making this kind of money right now and the opportunity that's coming just think about this for a minute the opportunity that that's coming is going to create even more opportunity for more deals to be done because more homeowners nationwide are going to need to sell their houses mm -hmm. unfortunately they're going to need help and we're in a unique position as real estate investors to be able to provide solutions and help these people while also making a profit as well, while also getting paid. Um, it's going to bring a flood of even more opportunities to the table for us as the days and time go. Um, yeah, I just, I just thought about it. Like I just got a message and um, we got an, we got an Aplex unit that we just got on the, um, we got on the contract uh, about a month ago. Um, we had a buyer, buyer's fund and fell through because we had it assigned and this is this is another big deal. I think we had we're making about sixty five thousand on this spread. Um but I'm partner up with an, another wholesale, so we we'll split that fifty fifty, which is fine. I mean this is in this like I said, this is still a big wholesale spread at the end of the day. We're gonna make like, you know, probably net like thirty one, thirty two thousand on this on this deal. And so the buyer fell through because of COVID-19, their lender stopped lending in Texas and in Florida. So they, they backed away. And so they were scared that we were gonna reopen. And so all these fears got them to back away. So what we did is we continue pushed, reached out to uh, some agents that have, you know, buyers that are, have money. So we reached out to them and we were able to still we're getting an assignment um, done today and they're still able to close by um, in, in seven days. So this is already going to be a done deal. Like it's, you know, it's crazy. So that's, that's a deal that we got on the works right now that we should be closing in the next seven days. Bro, that's amazing, man. Thank you yeah. so much again. Uh, do you have any last words that you want to share with anyone watching this um, that might be in that state of mind right now? Um, yeah. That they're not sure what's going on. What would you say to encourage them to, you know, keep pressing forward, keep and, and believe in themselves and believe, you know, what's possible. You're, you're living proof that you're making things happen right now. What would you say to encourage that person that might be uncertain right now? Yeah, I think the number one thing is, is to, you know, stay positive. Uh, make sure you're positive. Uh, make sure that you have the right people behind you that are positive. Um, negativity can weigh down on you hugely. And um, it'll you know, affect your entire performance. And also, if you do have a team, make sure you stay strong and stay positive for your team. And um, also incentivize them. You know, give them, you know, give them incentives, give them everything they need to thrive. Because in in these times, our employees thought they were going to lose their jobs, and we show them that they're not going to lose their jobs. I'm actually getting ready to send out a hundred dollar gift card to one of my employees for being with us for an entire year. You know, and and that's just you know. I want to do something nice for her. So those are the type of things that you guys have to, you know, continue doing and to, to make it forward, you know? 
put all that trash behind and, and just keep moving forward positive. Dude, thank you so much, man. Uh, this is the real deal. And it's uh, <laughs> people like you, Jeff, um, that uh, are living proof that, you know, this is an amazing opportunity right now um, as a real estate investor uh, to be in this business. And it's an amazing time also to be able to help people that are going to need your help. So thank you again, Jeff. I really, really appreciate you, man, for doing this. Uh, hey, no doubt. You are the first real deal interview that we've done. So thank you. <laughs> I got a couple others lined up today. Other people in our community that are uh, willing and open to sharing and being transparent about what they're doing right now to completely dominate their business in different markets as well. Right? Awesome. You have people in New Jersey. I just read a report this morning that um, 60 something percent of the cases of deaths from the COVID uh, virus um, happened in New York and New Jersey. Yeah. And two of our members are in that market and they're still dominating amongst, uh, you know, in spite of all the fear that's going on in that particular area right now as well. And then we got other members in Texas and different parts of the country. They're, they're dominating nationwide in different markets. So, um, so thank you for representing Florida. And Absolutely. The real estate is alive right now in Florida. So I'll tell you that. Say that again. I said real estate is alive right now in Florida. So that's facts. <laughs> there you go, man. Well, thank you, Jeff. I appreciate you, man. Take I'm care. Out. Take care.